Hey guys, welcome back to the Sweet Pea and Chicken Youth channel. I'm Mom, and this is. <laughs> <laughs> I've really done that before. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Sweet Pea and Chicken Youth channel. I'm Brooke, <laughs> and this is my mom, Kimberly, and it is episode 37, and today's date is March 24th, and we are coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia, in the United States. This is a crafty channel that I host with my daughter, Brooke, who's 17, who hasn't been on in how many episodes, Brooke? A long time. She's having a really busy <laughs> junior year. Anyways, we host it together. It's a crafty channel. Today, we have knitting, crochet, and needle punch, mm. which is the first mm -hmm. time. So that's really exciting. So a welcome. You can find us on Instagram at... Sweet Pea and Chickadee. And you can find... Brooke, do you update your crochet account lately? I post my stories sometimes, so I just repost. So what's your crochet account? Uh, Chickadee.crochets, right? Chickadee.crochets. Right. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. And Brooke, have you been on Ravelry lately? Yeah. What's your Ravelry? Uh, B Armini 05, first initial last name, and then just 05. <laughs> so yay, Brooke's back. <laughs> Welcome. We're so excited. I'm so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, you get to do the intro. Thank goodness, because I, I hate doing the intro. It only took you, what, like three times? That's to yeah. do the intro. Well, not yeah. bad after yeah. have not done it. I don't, when's the last time you were on? Was it like October? It November? Was like November. Something? November. It was before Grammy came for Christmas. Yeah, something like that. So it's been a while. Um, we have a couple giveaways to announce later on. They're from the previous episodes. I'm going to redraw for the two year anniversary. I never heard from that winner. So I'm going to redraw for that one. And then I'm going to draw for the St. Patrick's Day um, stitch marker from Hey Country Creations. And I know it's long past St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> but hey. You get a St. Patrick's Day stitch marker that you can use all year round and for next year. So there you mm -hmm. go. I'm wearing a finished object. It is not, oh, however, yeah. it's not my finished object. This is the Cedar Pullover by Hohi Locatelli. And my wonderful friend, Amanda, she knit this. Yeah. <laughs> so she knit this, um, not for me, for her. But um, it came out way too big for her. And she was like, instead of re-knitting the whole thing, she sent it to me and I was like, uh, yes, please. Because she's a tiny little thing. So I was like, let me, I'm going to try. She yeah. said for me or Brooke. And I tried on, I was like, oh my gosh, I fit so well. Now it's a little more cropped than I would make only because Amanda is like half my height. <laughs> not really. She's not that short. But, um, and so this would fit her perfectly. It actually fits me okay. She's a little cropped, so I'll just wear high pants, whatever. But it fits really well and I love it so much. And she even sent me the leftover yarn right here which is awesome because I have a couple skeins of it already for another project <laughs> and so now I get to add that on to this one because I don't I think they only had like two skeins at the store when I bought it and now I have a little bit extra so it's perfect so I make a tank top I think or something so it is the juniper juniper moon farm Zoe and it is a soft cotton linen blend 60% cotton and 40% linen and it's a colorway stardust which I'm really I love this color on me. It looks really good. Oh, yeah. I was afraid because sometimes you never know if these are going to wash me out, these colors. Yeah. But it's, I don't think it does. It looks really good with my hair color, too. Yeah, no, I like it. I really <laughs> like it. And it's very nice and, like, it'll be great for spring. Perfect timing. So thanks, Amanda. <laughs> and it's so cool. It's my first, like, I think it's, like, my first knitted item from somebody else. Yeah. And not only that, it's a sweater, which is just so cool. Like, oh, it's so cool having something knitted from someone else and a sweater. So that's really <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, and then Brooke, what you're wearing, you can't see. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing um, some socks that my mom <laughs> spinned, spinned up. Crank, yeah, cranked. Oh, cranked. <laughs> we use the knitting terms. Guys. Well, because spinning is like from fiber. Oh, well, I mean, it, it started there once. Yeah, but not so. by me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a picture. I'm going to show them here because you can't, you know, get your foot up there. But it is by Skein Queen. Here's the yarn label. And it is a 7525, and it is financial, it's in the crush, I think it's called a crush base, but the colorway's under here, and it's Financial Times. I got this in Looped, pre-pandemic, Looped in DC, and i just been, like, having it in my stash, because I love it so much. Um, and Brooke, she comes down, and she'll pick out, like, a few mm -hmm. skeins for me to like, add to my list for cranking for her for socks, because she, like, loves, it's, like, the one thing that she'll definitely knit or wear <laughs> for me, are my crank socks, but... Um, she only ever picks my, like, 
delicious hand dyed yarn. <laughs> like I'm like, you know, I have a whole area of like cranking yarn, like that I buy just to use on my machine because it's like, you know, sturdier or just whatever. And I mean, I can definitely, you know, use my hand dyed. I just set that aside for different things. But no, Brooke wants the nice, super delicious hand dyed yarn for her socks. She doesn't want no, you know, exactly workhorse yarn. She wants delicate flower yarn. Yeah. <laughs> and she loves them, right? Exactly. She wears them like almost every day to school. Yeah. I wear slippers to school, so I wear them. I actually told my friend that you made them. And she's like, oh my god, they're really pretty. And I was like, yeah, I know. Really? Yeah. The first, I know. I'm like, do you tell your I friend? She's I like, know. I don't walk I around do. telling people my socks. I'm I literally like, told you how, how Kelsey reacted when she saw them. And she's like, oh yeah, I know. I like the color. I tell them all the time. <laughs> I'm not mm. embarrassed of your knitting. <laughs> okay, so then those are what we're wearing now. So we'll just go right into finished objects because I have a couple. I don't really have as much as I probably should, but only because I've been making some huge progress on like larger mm -hmm. whips but first I have a couple finished objects so the other cranking pair of socks I have are were for my husband Damon you can tell by the ginormousness I, I mean like they're like on. hanging off <laughs> right, I like put them on so I was like hmm, well, these aren't for me but they <laughs> definitely aren't for mom he's a size 15 um foot so I crank his socks and I really like how these turned out they're like unique, but then so cool. He can wear because he likes he loves to wear them with his suits. He wears them all the time when he goes on work trips. And this is the colorway. Do you think if you like drew this, it would be, it would be a boomerang? It probably would be a boomerang. Uh, uh, so, so I see more of so, a bee. Like, Maybe boomerang? this. So this is, thing is it is a boomerang a boomerang because of its shape? Like it does a thing because of how it's shaped, or is it like some like sort of mechanic that it has to like? Maybe it's both. Like like a, what's I that one word where it, like does the thing that it looks like? Uh, a thing that tilts to do the job. A, no, I don't a, know. Just a perfect thing. Or like, or like, um, not false advertising. An orange is orange. Oh, isn't that isn't that a, like a word for that? Eng English person. Okay. <laughs> AP English class, Brooke. Okay. But the, <laughs> no, I'm Google. The colorway Brooke's gonna Google it. Is this Regia, and it's in the four. Oh, I don't want to even faded. Uh, four ply and it is the color I think it's just colorway number oh it's just black 1933 but it's got this great like fading it's like a great heathery kind of fading look I really like it and he doesn't I he has like all colors and stripes and so this is a really cool one that's just like a neutrally but still cool okay I found the answer it's really just the shape oh and it's like how you throw it so that was fun but whatever well, the shape and how you throw it. Yeah. It's, it's, if, it's throw, it's, it's, if, you, if it's thrown correctly and perfectly, I was like, okay, this is why I don't like boomerangs. Well. It's too precise. I've never, I've never thrown a boomerang and have it come back. I actually have this huge... You, do you have a boomerang? I, I... When is this? I'm have, your mother. I've never I have this. witnessed holding a boomerang before. You've witnessed... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've so, witnessed I'm holding it. i witnessed so Logan, my know. cousin, holding it and throwing it. And I was actually terrified. So you know in those movies... When like they throw it and then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, where'd it go?" and they're and they're like, "Oh, what?" Like, they, "Oh, hey, John, like, what are you doing over there?" And then all of a sudden it's kind of snags them in the head, and they're like, "Oh, there's the ring, you know." <laughs> Here, the Valentine's Day socks. Yeah, what month is it now? Uh, <laughs> I actually put that in. Um, I did. I did on my Instagram post. I'm like, okay, I know what month it is, but here are my Valentine's Day socks. All done. Thank you. This was a Chelsea Lux sock set from like I, I don't need, I think it was pre pandemic. It was called the Valentine's Day sock set. It was for Valentine's Day, and I just did some stripes. I'm not super pleased with the top ones, but I'd already done the first sock, and I was like, eh, I don't know. It looks a little too sporty. Yeah, I was gonna say that, but I didn't want to ruin your fun. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I like this. I like it. So I almost think I should have done like this spacing up here, and that would yeah, be like, cooler. Also, I probably... Because I did it differently. I mean, you could have also done... Yeah, probably that space. But you could also have just done, like... Um, or no, even... No like thing. Well, yeah, but I had... Yeah, I just had so it much really yarn. Pretty, it would have been really pretty if you, it. like, kind of, like, really, really thin stripes, like, the cuff, and then, like, kept it normal, and then did, like, the sharp thing down here. This would have been great, great information when I started this off. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. I didn't even know you had Valentine's Day yarn, so... Actually, yeah, of course. I, you had... You aren't during holiday. <laughs> even holidays don't even celebrate. You're like, yep. <laughs> uh, so they're they're opposites because I couldn't decide which one I liked better. I think I like this one better. Yeah. yeah. But the top is the same. So I like I did the top, the very top the same. So if they're peeking out from little boots, 
they look like they're matching like until you like look the rest. I know, I like this one too. I like the toe and the. But no, yeah, I, I didn't know they were yeah. mismatching until so I just pointed out. I just switched up the stripe. So up here, oh. I did my. I think I did a fifteen row cuff two by two, and then I did two rows of the normal before I switched to the stripes. And the stripes are fours, so four, 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 four. So that's how I did it. I should have maybe done like less here, maybe I don't know. But then and then I did an um, fish lips kiss heel. And then down here, I did three and two. So three, two, three, These two, are like socks and then into here. That cartoon character would wear. Is that a compliment? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because kids, like, you know, when children, like, watch a cartoon, they're like, I want that. Like, what they're wearing. That's what kids would be like. They're like, I want to wear those socks. Oh, yeah. You're a hit I with guess. the kids. I'm a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hit with the kids. Um, yeah, I really love this yarn. It was great. Super colorful. And I have, like, 58 grams left. Of the main color. Like, I can make a hat or something. <laughs> I mean, it would it would clash heavily with make? my hair. What you should make? Not mittens. It would be so cute. No. <laughs> no. Like, 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 oh, I love your mittens. So you're like, oh, yeah, look at my socks. <laughs> like, <laughs> you like those? <laughs> Wait till oh, you see this. Like, oh, my God. That's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Such a cute. And then you're even a bigger hit with the kids because they love the matching. <laughs> Why do I have to be a hit with the kids? <laughs> Okay, I don't even see kids. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah. I don't, I don't really. Okay, so the next thing I have, this is for the next one, is um my kit. So my needle punch kit. <gasps> it doesn't look so good on it's screen. Really it's so cool. So I had started this when I was laid up from my skin cancer procedure. Um, I had just started this part, and it took me like, I ripped it out like 10 times. Uh, I would get going and rip it out. So it took me a little bit to get the hang of it. And you can tell like this one's probably not as even. Like this is a little thick right here as the rest. But like the more you do it, the better you get. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. And I love it. So this is actually, when you do needle punching, it's like rug hooking. It's similar. The same kind of like thing. So this is actually the wrong side. Um, and this would be like the right side for the rugs. And now I didn't, uh, you would cut these shorter to match more the ends, but that would be that side. Like I learned all this as I'm like learning how to do this. But if you're just mounting it on the wall, the, the, for this kit, they want you to use the wrong side as the picture. And I love it. And it comes with this little yarn. I use a little bow. I'm going to hang it up here in the yarn room. And it's by, the whole kit was by Distal, Distal Fink fibers and I got it last year at Maryland Sheep and Wool because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really want to try needle punching and they have and this is all hand dyed yarn that they hand dyed I love it I know is it nice and then um so I wanted to try it before Maryland Sheep and Wool this year so that if I liked it I can get more kits or look at their kits or something and look at other um shop like owners carpet. kits yeah it's like well it's rug kind of you should make a rug I could make a rug I know I mean it's, it's same exact steps you should make it's just me different. a rug for when I go to college and I want to have like a little thing to bring with me and it's like it was my door. So you can walk on it? Yeah. <laughs> Usually those kinds of rugs are made all like I'll like, like, step on it, I'll be like, mom. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> so this is going to go on my yard. And then my door will be like, like Mr. Armenia. <laughs> that came off really wrong. I thought it was. Okay, so then I have a couple more. I would say finish. These are going to lead right into whips because they're also whips because they're part of blankets. So I have two more squares for my culmination. Blankets? I think it's what it is. But it's by Lindsay what? Fowler. It's in the when? Salt and Timber book. When? when did we start this? When was this a thing? Oh, um, I don't know. But during the times you haven't been here. <laughs> I didn't even know. I've never seen you working on this even once. They don't take long. So I, I do never, it within a day. I've never seen you working on this. I've got like three more, what, four do more. You, do you purposely like wait for me to go to bed so you just keep this a secret <laughs> No, it takes longer than that for me to make one. I've never, I've never seen her work on these before. <laughs> and I go to her room like 80 times a day. And I, I stay there for like 30 minutes each time. So it's just like, hey, I'm wondering, bro, like, when do you have time like, to stay in your room? Yeah, well, I don't like doing that. So I'll be like, I will literally be like mid movie and I'll pause and be like, I'm gonna go talk to mom. And I like go to mom and then I tell her my movie. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go finish it. And then you're, and then mom's always like, you didn't finish it yet? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I just pause and keep talking out with you. So here are two more squares. I love them both. They're pretty. I, yeah. So I, these ones are all made with fingering. 
a whole bunch of strands and some of them like the skeins were so big that I could double up so like one skein has I think that one has a couple of them but this one has a whole bunch of single skeins like four mini skeins and then one like I pulled from the inner and the outer to get it so that's this one and then I really like this one. I don't know, Mom. Here, really you gotta show it. Pull it up. Pull it up. You're, it's okay. backwards. Oh. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> ah. So as we figured out, I am not blocking these because it's just too big and ridiculous. So I'll just combine them later. But I think I'm up to like five now. I think I had three others already. And you guys, this like burns through so much yarn. Like I'm getting like, I don't, I might have enough for like one more. And also, like, I want to, I don't just want to throw together colors. Like, I want them to all be yeah. kind of similar. So, I don't. Are going to do, like, shades of green and blue? Yeah, I was doing, like, all the same shades of, like, the same color family is what mm -hmm. I was going with. And so, I'm kind of, I think I might have, like, one or two more squares. But this thing takes 30. So, basically, I am, I think a man, like, my friend Amanda is also doing it. Mm -hmm. She's doing one. And she ran out of scraps, too. And I'm like, yeah. So, we're aiming for, like, end of the year finishing this. Because we have to, like, knit more stuff to have more scraps in order to finish. But yeah, I love it. So two more. You can finish it in a day. It takes me a little bit. Only because I take breaks. But yeah, it's really easy. Easy to memorize. Now that I'm done. That one has Chelsea Lux yarn in it. And Malabrigo. Oh, there's two yarns in it? There's this many yarns in it. Oh. I think there's one. It looks like one color. I think there's six. It looks like one color. Well, technically... Only because I have one, two, three, four different yarns, but six strands. Can I have this blanket? <laughs> it's going to be a gift for somebody. For who? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Is it for me? No. <laughs> we haven't even seen the other colors yet. I want it. You just like, <laughs> I like this. I like this. Right, right here. here. <laughs> Can I have this? <clears throat> Wait, time. <laughs> you guys can't know. Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, and that's another reason I want to have it done by Christmas because I'm thinking it's going to be a gift there's for someone. People, there's people get I know. Gift. But there's only one. Oh, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> shocks. I was thinking five, you know, going to split the squares. So the Not a Crawl Crochet is a pattern, um, or is the designer I'm going with with my scrappy sunburst granny square blanket. And I'm not using her join, though. I'm using, um, I like a join as you go. And I'm actually, I think, what is it called? Did I write it down? I'm using a, I'll put it right here. It's like a specific kind of join as you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple more squares to add. And, but I haven't blocked them yet. Brooke, you want to show? These are just new ones I haven't blocked yet. That one's pretty. Like, every time I make one, nice. I'm like, oh, so pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I help her with some of the this colors, one. by the way, guys. Just don't give her all the credit. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> by picking colors. <laughs> every one time, I think, it was like, I don't know, but she was like, oh, I think this one. I was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's aggressive. Yeah, well, you know. When I walk in the room. All right, so then I'm also using the joiner yarn is the Dove Heather Color from the Knit Picks Swish DK. So for these squares, I have all of it in my Ravelry page, how I'm making these. Um, so the Nauta Crawl Crochet is only four rows, and I make mine five. It is Because I want to make it bigger. Huh? Is knitting or crochet? This is crochet. That's what Did I, I say knit? I, eh, okay. um, no, I'll just, I'll I do that I honestly was paying attention. This is so, crochet. <laughs> no, because it looks like, because this, I had, I st like, when I first started crocheting, like, before, I, like, the first time I did it, because I quit, and then, like, I restarted. But I was making a blanket, and what, it was, like, one of these things was one of them, mm -hmm. like, these little things, so it just looked familiar. And also, I knew you couldn't really, and I, I've never seen you with, like, because when you're knitting, you have it on, like, a cable. Cable. And yeah. I was like, there's no cable. Nope. So it's crochet. Um, I am using, so okay, so it's technically only four rows for the pattern. I do an extra row to make it five because I want to make it bigger. I do the same, everything is the same exact from the pattern. The only thing that's different is this row. Um, and then I do just do another one of these rows, but an extra pull up on the double crochet cluster. If you know what I'm saying, just, and if you go to my Ravelry page, if you really want to know. But everything else is the exact same for the pattern. So I want to make mine six by sixes. And I block them out before I join them. 
And I went ahead and I decided I want to do a joint as you go. And it's so fun. The one I found, I love. I love it so much. I forget what kind of a joint as you go it is. I'll have to put it on the... And then I wait until I have enough to do another row. And so I have... I'm making it eight blocks wide, I think. But then when I put it lengthwise, it's really long. So I don't know if I'm going to switch it up. I just heard all the animals, but it's eight blocks wide. Now it's going to go 10 blocks long and that's going to be a huge blanket, which is fine, but it's, I'm holding the yarn double. So a DK, this I'm holding single cause it is DK, but all these are like fingering held double and it's getting kind of heavy. So we'll see. I haven't quite decided yet, but it's, I keep pulling this, which is fine. It's just crochet. Brooke, do you want to hold? I think I have four rows done. Or do I have five? One, two, three, four. Four rows done. So here's the first. I'm going to start from one end and we can like move it on down. So here's the first. Four. <laughs> it's like so big. But I love it. So this is supposed to be how wide it is. Brooke, can you hold it across to you? So it would cover two people wide. Look, I still have, and then you have. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's, maybe I should do this as lengthwise. Because if I put it lengthwise, it hits me kind of like mid chest and goes over my feet. If I'm sitting up, of course, not if I'm laying down. So it really depends on what I want to use it for. If I want to use it as like a sleeping blanket or just like a cuddle blanket. I don't know. I would say cuddle blanket. But I love them. And I just kind of put them in order as whatever I, if it looks good next to the one ahead of it next to it, I, there's not really... I just kind of grab it. And I really like how these are looking in this join as you go. The corners, I mean, this like little kind of flower looking thing. I love that. And because a lot of the join as you go is you have to almost not have done the outer, like on the, like I shouldn't have done this, but yeah. So the one I chose, I basically just added on to it and created a second border. And it's so easy. It's easy to memorize. It's fun. Oh, this is the back. It's easy to memorize. It's fun. All these ends are woven in and I have blocked them. So I should go back and just trim them all now. So I, in, when I make these squares, I am knitting over all the ends or crocheting over all the ends. And the only one I have to weave in at the end is the very last one. And that's it. So it's really, makes it really nice. But yeah, so I really like this. Mm -hmm. And so eight blocks and then I attach them and I only have three for the next one. But yeah, I really am obsessed now. And I've gone through so many row one minis. So at first I was just using my row one minis and now I'm using like whatever leftovers I have from other projects um, at, along with my row one minis. I have not used any DK in the square yet. It's just fingering held double, but I totally could add in a DK since it's the same weight. I just haven't done it yet. But now our, my Rowan yarn, I had paused that subscription like last year mm -hmm. because it was so like, I had so many, right? I had so yeah. many, I wasn't using them fast enough. So I had paused it, which really I canceled it. Knowing I would probably restart it later. And I'm not ready to restart it. Cause all I I'm have sure. left I agree. is this. It's all I have left, mm -hmm. which is so a lot, but I'm flying through these. So I have it right now. I've emptied out the rest of them. This is all I have left. The, I have these organized as these are only ones I can use for the first row because if you I just weigh them. So these are only uh, only enough bit left for the first row. This will work for the second row. And then everything else is the other ones. And like I will start randomly. So I have this one started. And I have this one started. But yeah, most of these are row and minis. Some of them are leftovers from like my culmination squares. I threw them in here. So yeah, I just kind of go as I go. And I am using a 4.5, which I believe is a D crochet hook, 4.5 millimeter. And yeah, so it's really fun. They're really quick. Mm -hmm. And I love this blanket so much. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing with it now. So let's go, Brooke, you want to fold it up? And I had ordered, so it's, here's the Swiss GK knit picks. I ordered four skeins of this and this is the last one full skein I have. I mean, they're five, 50 gram skeins. So I thought two would be enough. It's not <laughs> like 200 grams. 
the 200 grams, whatever. I thought it would be enough. It's clearly not. I'm gonna have to order more. Oh, bummer. Another Knit Picks order. Which is fine, because I think I need enough. I need more for my son's cable sweater, so I'm gonna have to order more of that anyways. So it works out. Yes, yeah, so I have this much and then this much. You're doing so good, Brooke. Good job. And I have it in a Scrappy Angel blanket tote because it's huge now. I had it in a smaller one, but now it's just massive. But so it's massive and I still have like a ton of room left. Okay. Oh. So that goes right into my whips. And let's talk about another blanket, Brooke. My habitation throw using my Ruby and Roses Advents mm -hmm. from this last year. And I'm doing a modified version. Oh, good. There's no yarn attached right now. So this is the front. Ah, uh, this is my habitation throw. It's a modified. Um, it's going to be huge, basically. I had a ton of yarn and I wanted to use it. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of leftovers. So I copied, okay, so I first saw this mod from <sighs> Fiberbound. <laughs> I saw her doing it this last advent, Fiberbound. She said she'd got it from another podcast, We Share Needles. They, so I went and watched their podcast. They said they got it from Nick Knack Zach. <laughs> so I had, which he had done it like many, a couple years ago at least. Um, so I went back and looked at his. He, take, he took really good notes in his Ravelry. Um, so this is not how that, I mean, the Habitation Throw is written with this pattern. It's just the color switching is not the same. So for Habitation Throw, it's a square. It's corner to corner. You're just adding it in until your yarn runs out. You're attaching to the next yarn and going. So it's kind of like a fade. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like this kind of concept um, where you're striping it in. So I did, it's a lot of mods, a lot of, not mods to the pattern, but mods to the way that you're doing the rows and when you're adding in the yarn. And I went longer, obviously. This mm -hmm. mine's bigger. So I knew from Nick Nag Zach and from We Share Needles that they had yarn, even after they striped this, left over. So the, the thing is to stripe up in the sequence, get to the time when you stripe back down, and you reverse the order. So like this would be the, the big stripe on the way back down. That way you use the most yarn. And so I, they still had like, they were showing like eight grams left out of a mini skein. I'm like, I don't want leftover yarn. Like I, I'd rather, much rather have just a bigger blanket. And so what I did was, first of all, I started with day 25 because that's my full skein. And so day one doesn't start till the stripe. Go all the way up till I get to day 25, which is, you can see here. So what I decided to do is I am doing combi combo, I call them combo stripes. So I have day 25 combo stripe, which is one through five, days one through five. So I do down and back in day one, down and back in day two, and I had measured it and that takes about three grams. I had between four and six grams left from each. If you do all the weighing, it's a lot of math. I estimated after I'd be done going back down to your side, I would have between four and six grams. So these only take three grams. I'd rather have a little bit of yarn left over and have a buffer. Mm -hmm. So day 25, and then I have down and back in one day, down and back another day. And each one is separated by five, five, 10 rows, but five um, garter rows, basically like down and back. Then I do a combo stripe, and then I do day 25 again, because that's a full skein. Then I do a combo stripe, days five through six through 10. Then day 25, this is days 11 through 15, then day 25 again, and then I just did 15, 16 through 20, and now I'm going to do day 25 again, and then do days, the last combo stripe. So I only have one more combo stripe to do after this, and then after I do day, day 25 again, I'm going to then go back down the other side, and then I'll be done. So what I'm doing here during this combo stripe phase is I'm making this into a rectangle instead of a square. And by doing that is I am doing pattern in the decrease side. So I'm decreasing like where you're supposed to, like just like it says to in the pattern. But on this end, I'm continuing the increase. So when I get to the point where now I'm gonna go back down in the colors, 
I will keep this decrease and then I will just start this decrease and it'll make a rectangle. It's pretty. That's my plan. <laughs> Also, each, so I have everything from the advent except for the eyelet rose, and they are done in the colorway mirror from the same dyer. I ordered those when she was having a sale during advent time, and I'm like, I wanted, so far I've only used one skein. I have two, but I think I'm going to be fine with just one skein of this gray separating it. But yeah, so I have everything, super good notes in my Ravelry if you want to check it out. But I do, it is a paid for pattern, so I don't really... Like I'll say use pattern decrease, use pattern increase. I don't tell you what that is because you have to pay for the pattern. So I don't want to like give away how she does it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Habitation Thrill by Helen Stewart. And I, I think I, I think I add an extra row in between the eyelets, like according to the pattern, but I have it all detailed there. But yeah. I love it. I love this yarn. Mm -hmm. I love the colorways. I love the sequencing. It's so pretty. It's ruby and roses, and it's her soft rose base, which is really soft and squishy. It's pretty. I like it. So this, like, lighter section will be the middle of the blanket. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So, yeah, I have it completely off now because she did an eyelet row. So now I'm going to start day 25 next for the next row. And I have – so here's how much I have left over of my mirror colorway of the first skein. And I still have how much day 25. And I've calculated out I should still have leftovers of day 25 when I'm done. But yeah, and I keep them all in their bags, their numbered bags, so I know exactly, you know, which one's which. This is so fun. And it's very soothing. So I usually do this. I haven't picked up since last weekend, but I do this when we're watching TV, like when Dad and I are watching shows. So I don't really have to look at it. It's just knitting. Unless you're doing an eyelid row. Yeah. Which even then, it's pretty easy. Also have this in a Scrappy Angel bag, my favorite pair one. But yeah, so that one's fun. And I have a lot of, um, all the notes mm -hmm. in my Ravelry. Okay. Now, let's talk about the sad one, which is Daylon's Cable. Have I told you about this yet? I don't think I did. So I'm making Daylon, my son, a cable sweater. He really wanted a cable sweater. Cable turtleneck, actually. Mm -hmm. And he picked the color and everything, which is Knit Picks. In the Nutmeg Heather colorway, which is currently like back order <laughs> or not in stock, coming back in stock. So the set, so I, I put it on cables so he could try it on, make sure for lengthwise. So I wasn't sure if I was going to do the full length that he wanted and we are going to go with the full length of the pattern because it's bottom up. And not only is it bottom up, but you then knit the sleeves separately and then attach. Mm -hmm. I have yet to do that. That's so, cool. and for someone who doesn't live with me, that to keep constantly like see, is it long enough is it too long i'm like just guessing it'll be a lot of like waiting till he comes home but he's not gonna wear this until next winter anyways because yeah. it's really warm so i discovered when i took this off the cables for some reason i never saw it before now i need to find it right here oh where'd that come from what is that yeah i swapped the i cabled the wrong way how, why? So it looks beautiful. This is the Crossbell sweater by Knit for Sweet, which is Natalie Pellick. She's a Ukrainian designer. Um, I did take a couple notes in my Ravelry only because it is translated to English. And I don't think the translation was from a, like a native English speaker. Um, it still is great. There's just a couple things that I like had to, I just took note of and put on my Ravelry in case you're trying to figure something out. But, um, yeah, you'll be able to see it because it is right here, right there. Oh, my goodness, you are guys. You go back and fix it? Yes. You are? Yeah. Dalen's like, I didn't even notice. He doesn't care. Well, yeah. No one and else either. I will notice oh forever. God. Every time I he wears it, either. I will be like, <laughs> <laughs> my eyes will like zero in. <laughs> Okay, so luckily with cabling, though, you can fix it. Now, the reason why it's still on cable is because I did have a bit of a cry. <laughs> My little meltdown, like, no, because it is so, look how far down it is. Yeah. So obviously not knitting back. Luckily, with cables, you can just drop down. Now, I've never had to drop down this far. And luckily, this cable is only four stitches. So, and it's nothing crazy, okay? It's like a front and back, right, of four stitches. So like two and two. So it's pretty simple, but it's just all the way down there. And I just cabled it the wrong way. I cannot even believe I didn't notice it when it happened. Cause I, I've done it before when I was doing that section 
and I've caught it. Like, oh, that was weird. And I went back and fixed it because it's literally like cable after cable, this whole thing. Like over here, it's cable and then separating and it's obvious. This one is just cable after cable. So it's harder to see it, but still, oh my gosh, I will literally see this forever. <laughs> like every time he wears it, I'd be like, <sighs> like it would just irk me only because look, look how much cabling this is. It's like a, you know, a super masterful cabling masterpiece and there's going to be something wrong. No. So I'm going to fix it. Probably, I would say maybe this weekend, but probably next week. Because I'm going to have to like, I'm going to want to do it in like one sitting. Because when I drop everything down, well, the four row, the four stitches, I'm going to want to catch it and go back up. Oh, oh. No, it's not. No. <laughs> Look how far it is. Has anybody else gone down this far on a cable to fix it? I mean, so luckily it's not like, like if it was as far, if you drop, if you dropped a stitch and to pick it up, like that would be too far. But it's, it's, the stitches are already there. I just flipped them the wrong way. So it's pretty easy to go back down, but I'm going to want to make sure my tension's the same. You know, it's just, it's going to be interesting, but I mean, I've, I've had to fix worse, but oh, can I believe I did that? So that's why I'm having a bit of a cry. I'm only an inch and a half to two inches away from being done with this main body part. And then what you do is separate front and back and then the sleeves. And so like, this is like the longer rows because it's the front, you know, and then a turtleneck, mm -hmm. which the turtleneck is not cable. It's just ribbed. <sighs> I couldn't believe that. He put it on. I was like, what is this? I'm like, <gasps> he was like, mom, it's okay. I don't even notice. I'm like, I know this. <laughs> you can't be wearing this masterful cable sweater. Oh my gosh. It's like if I, the sweaters I make for you, I'm like, oh yeah, it's a giant hole in it or something. Okay. That's not even, that's not giant even hole. Not, it's the that's same. Not even, no, it's not. It's the same thing. Here's the yarn. And I'm pretty sure I need to order more. Like I went off of the requirements or the suggestions from the pattern and I'm sure I need, I'm going to need more. So, and it's the nutmeg Heather colorway, which is already like, you can't order anymore, but until at the end of April, it comes back in stock. So I'm just going to stock up, which is a good color. I really like this color. Mm -hmm. Let's see. <sighs> Had a bit of a cry. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. Then, okay, the rest of it just are just my socks. So, ooh, your socks. So the Twisted Staircase Socks by Craft Nut Yarns, and I'm in my Zebra Yarns Advent, the 12 Days of Christmas Advent. So I made the tubes like this. Finished the tubes, so it's 12 days, 12 stripes. I did the Twisted Staircase pattern, it's beautiful. For some reason my measurements kept being off, and I was like, you know what, I'll just make a tube and do an afterthought heel. I don't know what I was thinking. It was a beast to do this. I did one sock just finished it today but it's actually a good thing I waited because um Brooke would like them so well she kept saying she's like I love those socks every time she would come in I'm working mm -hmm. on them she's like I love them I'm like Brooke would you like these I, I have a ton of socks and she was like it's okay and I was like honey you can have them. she's like okay yeah I want them I was like yeah okay I was even so, so, I was, <laughs> so I was like oh good well then I was doing afterthought heels so it's perfect I'll just add them in for her for her length which you need to try these on because it's seeming really long but um picking so picking up these stitches, first of all, counting the rows. I was not keeping track of my rows as I went. That was dumb. Mistake number one. <laughs> Keep track with this pattern because it shifts, because it pulls, because it's, a, you know, it's a ribbing, a twisted slip stitch kind of thing. So it's hard. They don't line up like you think they would. Um, so I had to go back and put these in. Don't do that. And then picking up the row, oh my gosh. And I was just like, I just need to get it done. And I was so actually really proud of how <laughs> clean it looks because it was good. It was a hot mess when I first started to try to pick it up. There was like holes and mist stitches. I'm like, what is happening? <sighs> I figured it out though. So oh. sock number one is done, Brooke. So pretty. Zebra Yarns Advent. I loved it. And now I seem to battle through the pickup of this one. I think I have a marked. Um, but the pickup, the, the, at picking up the stitches and actually what I did was I slipped it onto a yarn it made it easier for me to see the straight line and then and then I added onto needles after I and then I cut it was just it was whew, it was like a really intense mm -hmm. which actually my all my socks have been giving me troubles because your socks that I just finished for you they were cranked um one of them I had to like redo the toe anyways because I had overshot it on my machine and had to like pull out yarn and like that all worked out. And then 
Damon's, my husband's, where's his socks at? The black ones? I couldn't even believe it. I was like seaming the toes last night. And I'm like, okay, they all, they all look good. And then I'm like, what is that stitch at the very tip of the toe? And then it pulled and then like unraveled. Like it was <laughs> like it was a like it was a like a missed stitch, a drop stitch or something that was like never picked up like on my machine. But it was at the very tip. And uh, you guys saw crankers know that you actually seam on the front, so like the tip should have been was knitted by the machine. So like I had missed a stitch somehow on my machine, and I have been doing socks for like. I guess it'll be like a year this summer. Mm -hmm. A ton of crank socks. Even when I was learning, never one time has that ever happened to me. I was like, I don't even know how that, I mean, it is black yarns. That's probably why I didn't see it. But like, I've never had that issue. I was like, all these socks are just like fighting me. <laughs> They're like putting my, my expertise to use here. So yeah, this is so pretty. I love how bright they are. They are really pretty. So yeah. And so I have, I have quite a bit of this left. <laughs> and this is in my... Um, Red's Lady bag. I have a bunch of Christmassy ones from her. So hopefully that'll be done here pretty soon, but you can wear them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the last one is my Nomadic Shorties. I know I told you guys last time, or whenever I mentioned these, that, okay, so what happened, Brooke? I made these sock tubes, these shorty sock tubes. Yeah. And I made them, and I was like, what is happening? One looked really short compared to the other. And I was like, mm -hmm. like really small. I'm like, what is happening? I was like, I am not fixing it because they were already done. <laughs> I'll just add in the heels. Everything's fine. It'll be fine. I won't really notice. But I was like, I kept going back and being like, it was really noticeable because they're short socks. So you're going to mm -hmm. notice more, I think. So I'm like, never mind. I'm just going to fix them. So I actually pulled back the toe, put them on. Now I'm redoing the toe, and then I'm going to do the heels. This is Nomadic Yarns. I have it, Brooke. Nomadic Yarns, it was a 50 gram skein. I love how she does 50 gram skeins in her Yak Sock Base and the colorway's Old Friend. So it's the Yak Sock Base, so it makes it a little bit darker. The colorway stripe's darker. It actually looks darker in person than it's showing on the camera. Yeah, it's darker. It's darker in person, yeah. but it's so soft. I love this. So it's really cool um, doing other socks and then coming back to these socks. I'm like, oh, it's so soft. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm just starting the toe basically again after I fix it and add in more, which is fine. So now I had, I pulled out this much left and I'm going to have to add in more, which is fine because I had some left, which I should have known that off a 50 gram skein that there was, if I had that much left, I did something wrong. <laughs> and then the heels are going to be this, this color. And that was a row one mini. I don't know what color it was. And this is in a Cottontail Farm bag. You love Cottontail Farms. I like do all like your bags. Farms. Okay, and that's it for whips. Yay! <laughs> okay, let's move on to acquisitions. I do have some acquisitions. Um, actually, not, not like a huge amount compared to what I normally have that amount of time, I feel like. <laughs> I really like how Brooke is um, sitting so much shorter than me. <laughs> Because she's a full, at least an inch, inch and a half taller than me in real life. And she always just kind of slouches. I'm like, you make me look giant. You're yeah. taller than me. Yeah. Like, if I were to sit up straight, like, hold on. Yeah, sit up straight, Brooke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really what, that's how big. <laughs> she does it every time. I'm like, why do you just slip like that? I look so humongous. Okay. So let's do, for, oh, first of all, I need to, I got this and I did not show it last time and it's like winter and I still haven't showed it. So this is a Scrappy Angel bag. This is an Aran bag from Scrappy Angel. The faux leather bottom. I love it. And look at the snowman. And I don't know if you can see this, but the snowflake, all the snowflakes sparkle. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. that. Can you see that on the camera? Oh, right there. You can see that one sparkling. They all sparkle. So cool. I love it. And I haven't even, look at the red. Mm -hmm. And look at the inside. So cool. And of course the angel stitch marker matches. She just had an update from Michael Trey's. I just called it Michael Trey. I don't have my right on me. But she's actually added more things to it. You guys should go check it out for sure. Okay, and also coupon code down below, always for Scrappy Angel. And okay, let's do Yarnable. So here's the March, so it's like almost April, but here's the March Yarnable. It's Rest, Relax, and Recharge. Brooke, do you want to show the colorway? I think it's really pretty. I saw the Crazy Sock Lady actually knit this up, and it's super pretty. So it looks a little bit more green in person. It's blowing out a little bit. Yeah. It's not that bright. 
but it's still bright at the same time. It's like tomatoes. a darker bright. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me. But, you know, I can... <laughs> but we can see it. <laughs> it looks nice. So then the, the extras it comes with. The Bella and Bear Tropical Travel Pack. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some, like, what's in there? Shampoo, um, salt yeah, scrub. Shampoo, conditioner, foaming salt scrub, and a face mask. Ooh. I might take this from you. Um. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Next. Um, the reusable Swedish cloth designed by Yarnable. Got some yarns on it. It's cute. And then this, the um, tape measure. Now, this baby is heavy duty. It is. It's heavy. Like, and it's... It's like actually metal. Like it's like a it metal out. one, like a real. Although it doesn't have a thing where like you can. No, like... it doesn't stop. Like it doesn't stop. So like, if it... I'm not gonna like it. I'm gonna break it. But like, if you let go, like it goes good. Mm -hmm. And it's but it's heavy duty, so it is really nice. It's pretty heavy. It'll be more like for measuring furniture. Or it has like a something. cute little yeah, logo. It's cute. Right there. It's really cute. Yeah. Okay, so that's March. And actually, I think I'm I'm thinking about pop, like stopping my Arnable. And starting row one. Well, I will definitely start. I'm going to wait a couple mm -hmm. months to start row one. I'm going to get down in my supply and start row one. And next I'm going to make, be making more. I need to finish my blanket and then make more blankets. Mm -hmm. And then, but Yarnable, I love Yarnable. They have amazing extras, but I have a lot of it. Like I was cranking through it really well on my sock machine. I'm like, yeah, I'm flying through. But then like if I miss like a month of cranking or, you know, of cranking Yarnable, it's just, it, I don't. I have, so, I have so many. I got to look down there. I was like, oh my gosh. Because I have a separate section for my Yarnable. Because I usually do crank those socks. Which section is it? It's underneath there. You can't really see because I have a... It's in that oh. slider. But oh. like, I thought I had like hardly any left. Cause I crank so many of them. Because you, I usually make them for you. Mm -hmm. And then like, no, I have a ton. I'm like, how does this happen? I'm like, so I need to stop it. Not saying I won't start it again later. But I feel like I'm just like getting yarn for my stash. Yeah. And I have so much stash. So maybe I will cancel that and then maybe there's like another subscription that I want or mm -hmm. I can buy a yarn mm -hmm. from someone else. Like some people have like monthly things like boxes that they only do like if you sign up each month or something. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But then I was going to like do it this month, but I'm glad I didn't. And then, well, I was going to do it for April, but then they already showed it to me. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But because they have like a sneak peek. So you can sneak peek the yarn, but not the extras. And I was like, oh, no. I really like the extras. I use them a lot. Like, a lot of the extras. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see. I love it so much. I just I just have so much of it. And I can't keep up. So, okay. Next up. Ooh, my Knitting for Olive. So, Knitting for Olive is from Amsterdam, I believe. If not, I'll put where they're from. Right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Amsterdam. Right? Anyways. Um, so Knitting for Olive, they have a Ukrainian, like, fundraiser each year. I did it, I mean, each year since last year. I did it last year where they have one day where if you order, like, all of their proceeds, I think, go to, like, a program for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They did it last year, and I ordered the yarn for my marzipan pullover, which I don't know if that yarn's going to be used for that anymore. I love the yarn. I don't know if I like what that sweater now for some reason. Yeah. It'll probably be another sorry Northland sweater. But so I got that. And then this year they were doing it again for a different like thing for Ukraine. And so of course I had to order. And it's they're very their yarn is very affordable. And then you pay like what 15, 20 bucks for shipping. But literally it comes faster than Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I get it faster than Canada. And I got stuff from Ireland. It was yeah, so fast. It was really fast. I was like, how's that even possible? I mean I granted I'm on the East Coast, but still. Yeah. I mean Canada. Come on people. But I mean, postal services. So I ordered enough yarn to make the Clotilde cardigan, which is a pattern by Knitting for Olive. It was, it's a mother-daughter company. I think the mom is a designer. Um, but I got the sage green colorway. So it's mohair and the heavy merino, which is a worsted weight. Mm -hmm. It's heavy merino held double and Knitting for Olive uh, silk mohair held double, I think. I think they're both held double, yeah. So I hold four strands together to do this cardigan. And I got the same color for both. It's the slate green colorway, and they look a little bit different. 
so cool. I love this dark green color. It's going to be so pretty for a nice thing. cardigan. They, so I was trying to decide between the cardigan and the pullover, which I think is funny that the, you seem to be like the same, but I, the cardigan, you only hold the mohair single, I think, in this double. Mm. So you didn't have to use buy as much mohair. Yeah. But I was like, you know, I use a cardigan more often than a pullover. Like, I like sweaters. Like, yeah. Like, sweater jacket, like mm -hmm. cardigans. We'll see. But then I'm like, so I ordered more, and if I change my mind, I'll have an ex leftovers extra of this. So I ordered a ton, because you have to have, these are all 50 gram, right? Yeah. So you have to order, like, a ton of these. Right? I had to order, like, 13 or 12 of these, and, like, eight of these, and so I got them all in, and they're so pretty. I don't know what I'm going to cast on, but, um... I will. And it came in, it always comes in paper bags, but this one was actually in a, another decompose or a compostable plastic bag, which I liked. Next was Knit Picks, and I ordered Brooke's sweater. Okay, so remember how Brooke's sweater did not turn out, and we were like, <laughs> what is happening? And now we were done. Yeah. So I was going to make the big rib sweater by Jessie Made for mm -hmm. her in the. And one of the recommended yarn is Wonder Fluff by Knit Picks. And I had never felt it before, so I was hoping it would be soft. And oh my gosh, it is so mm -hmm. soft. And Brooke really wanted a black or white sweater. Yeah. And so I'm like, do you want a black sweater in the big room? <laughs> she was like, yes. I'm like, okay. So I'm hoping because it's so chunky that the bigger stitches will help with the black yarn. Yeah. But they their black yarn is called Wellies, and it's like a heathered black. It's really pretty. And it is so soft, like cloud soft, like next mm -hmm. to skin soft. Like you don't even have to wear anything under it. I mean, you might because of the, the ribbing nature. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's going to be Brooke's sweater. And I wanted to get farther along in Daylin's cable first because I feel like if I stop doing that, I will never pick it back up again. Mm -hmm. So I want to get farther along in that. And then there will be times where I have to wait for him to try it on. So that will be when I cast on your sweater. Mm -hmm. Um for the big rugs. And that shouldn't take very long at all because it's big chunky needles and that'll be really cute. And th that's more your style anyways. It's mm -hmm. like a cropped, like, like yeah. slim fitting. That's more your style. I don't know what mm -hmm. we were thinking with the other one. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know, I don't man. Because I even tried, I was like, no, it didn't work. Yeah. And then what was that sweater? That one was the no Mondrian pullover by Two of Wands. It just did not work. And I have that yarn for something else. So I also ordered the yarn for to join my crochet blanket. And then I ordered some Felici. I had never tried Felici before. Their sock yarn. It's like their self-striping sock yarn. I think they also have tonals too. But um, So I ordered a couple just to try it out. These are all 50 gram balls. So you buy two. And I figured I was just cranking them on my machine. I hear they're great on the machine. Mm -hmm. The first color is Poseidon. I think I'm going to make these for Aunt Lucy. She likes blues and yeah. grays. And I already have socks for my Uncle Rob. I seem to like seam the toe. But I think this Poseidon colorway would be for my Aunt Lucy. I'm going to crank these for her. And then show the other ones. This one is Night Market. Night Market. Got two here. Isn't that pretty? I love that. It looked really cool, the striping up. Mm -hmm. And when I got it, I'm like, I really do like it. Because you can't tell sometimes on a computer. I really like this colorway. This will probably be for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got from there. And I'm going to have to make more purchases through Nitpix. Darn. I always wait for sales. I think I got like 10% off or something. Yeah. Or maybe like just these were on sale or whatever. Then, oh my gosh, I won a giveaway. <laughs> I couldn't believe it from one of my favorites, Hedgehog Fibers in Ireland. They were having like, you know how like any dyers have these giveaways of like, whatever they have a giveaway for a fade and all you had to do was like the post and then say what your favorite or what's one thing you wish you could do like one one yarny wish or something yeah that's it you don't have to tag anybody or anything and was, i won what was your yarny wish? i said i want to knit faster wow. but also i want to go like on a knitting vacation i said like it like they have in ireland and iceland like where you actually go and it's like a group of people that like that's you travel cute. around and do stuff, but it's, like, knitting related. Oh, that's cute. And you knit while you're, it's like, oh, it's up. I want to do one of those. Mm -hmm. And it was a fade, and it was, like, one of those um, potluck fades where it was, like, a one-of-a-kind. 
And I won. <laughs> and not only that, it came in like four days. It did come really fast. She literally told me about it, and then I came back home, and then there was like this. Okay, they, they like to shove huge things in our mailbox. Yeah. So I was like, they don't want to come down our long driveway. I was like yanking <laughs> this out, and then I was like, Mom, something came for you, and you're and you're like, and you didn't even know what it was because like you did. It was so be, fast. You know, maybe a hedgehog. I gave her my like, address on Thursday, and it was here on Monday. Yeah, it was that's really quick. crazy. I mean, yeah. like we're in a different country. There's customs. Like I don't. There's. I mean, the, just the the. The, yeah. the, I, it was just insane. It was super fast. Um, and I didn't have to pay for a single thing. It was crazy. I can't remember which that which one. I think it was this way. Why would you double that out? Because I want to show it in person. Know. Brooke, you got to. Well, you're not really doing that great. <laughs> Here, you hold just this give me three. I think it was this one. So here's the fade. I love it. So they have a whole bunch. All their patterns that they have are free online. Um, so they have a whole bunch of patterns that fade. And so I want to do something that fades. Um, they have a great, some great shawl ones, but I was like, how many shawls does one person need? Nobody I have a bazillion shawls. I love them, but I have a bazillion. So I want to make a sweater. Now the sweater that they have that I like, um, I would need like an extra skein, like a six skein. I did find a whole, so I would need to con continue off of this one. And I have, I have a couple of one skeins from Hedgehog Fibers and Either that or I buy another one. But I kind of wanted to keep it, like, not spending money. Yeah. So I'll probably just add in one of my other ones. It'll totally work. Because I think I have a really dark, dark blue one that has some orange in it that might work. Mm -hmm. It might look a little drastic, but the sweater is the La Pouf sweater. Um, a lot of them, it's all down at the bottom, and it's really cool. It has, like, a drastic dark color with it. Yeah. It's also on their new Oh So Fine base. Brand new. And so I got to try it out. 100% merino wool. I think it's just the way it's plied. It is so soft. Yeah. And so I'm really excited about that. I got to try it out. I got this whole fade, which I've never had one of their fades before. And I'm so excited. It was just so I had never win. And there was like over 3,000. It was like only 24 hour like turnaround drawing. Mm -hmm. And there was over 3,000 comments. And I won. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I did them. <laughs> hedgehog fibers. And of course, it'd be hedgehog fibers. I love them so much. Because I got to go visit them when we were in Europe. And they're so nice. And they're so cool. Like, their little studio is, like, you only get to be in, like, a little little bit of it. But it's, like, a whole building. And it's really cool because they have, like, their wall of, like, their skein wall of, like, the sample skein colors. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of potlucks. But they have, like, returning colorways. And they put it up on, like, this pegboard. It's, like, a, it's like floor-to-ceiling pegboard. And they said, yeah, when, their when the person is dying, because they have a whole team, when the person is dying that color, they'll come out get the sample skein, take it back, unwind it, lay it out so they can match it perfectly Dang. or as close to perfect as you can get. And it was, so, I was like, that is so cool. That is cool. It's so cool learning all about their like ways. All right. And then the last thing, Brooke, we went to Butterfly Hill Farms. We got to see some alpacas. So Daylin was home for spring break for college. And I really wanted to go see this alpaca farm. It was their opening weekend was last Friday, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we went there, and we got to feed alpacas. We did. And they had two baby alpacas. They did. They were so they cute. They were so cute. And, yeah. They, they, they don't let you pet on the head, right? Like, pet on the neck. Yeah, they pet on they the neck. They were head. so soft. And then we went inside and did a little shopping in a little farm store. And I had seen how they had just released, because I follow them on Facebook now, their first sock yarn. Because they have yarn there and fiber, which I didn't know about that. So I'll be back to that later. But from their alpacas, they have yarn that they send off to the mill, bring it back, and then she hand dyes. Like, it's so cool how it's, like, mm -hmm. full circle all from that place. And it's all local. And so I picked out – and they, this is the first year they've had sock yarn. And so I picked out this color. I've already have it wound up. It's pretty. So exciting. Where's the – can you hand me the, the card? Oh, so this is a hundred and like sixty gram skein, but it's four hundred yards. So it is more like, and I did like the little gauging. I think it's more of a sport weight, but it has alpaca wool and nylon in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna probably like stripe or micro stripe, which is gonna be really cool. It's definitely micro stripes. When I was pulling it, the the blocks weren't that long. It's gonna micro stripe. So I'm making socks out of it. And I have an extra theme because when I was unwinding it, I got to almost the end and it was separate. Now, I don't know if it was me. I think there was a weak spot because I had gotten caught and then all of a sudden they were, they were separate, two different ones. I'm like, oh, 
which is fine because this is most of the skein. And mm -hmm. I would much rather have it separate than a knot. So it worked out. Yeah. So I have this, which I don't even think I'll even use this. I'll probably use this for something else because I don't think I'm going to use more than this. So I'm trying to figure out different... I have it ready to go. I really want to cast this on, which is why I was finishing a bunch of other socks. Mm -hmm. I want to cast on more socks. Yeah. And I can't decide which pattern I want to do. I either want to do the chicken scratch socks by... You guys probably know. Lauren Colby. Or, because what that does is it makes them really, a really squishy pair of socks, but these are, this yarn is already squishy. So that means it'll be really squishy. Do mm -hmm. I, they might be more like house socks. Do I want that? Maybe. Or, <laughs> I mean, I want to do the Simply Ribbed Socks by This Handmade Life, and it has like the square ribbed heel. And that would be nice and like squishy without making it overly I can't decide because the chicken scratch socks are on my list to do this year so I could like knock it out if I do it this year you, like swatch it or something can you not swatch yeah it? I can swatch no I can swatch it I just don't like swatching oh, okay. I like just knitting it and then seeing That's if I ready. which I probably will maybe I'll just start it but then it's like they're kind of sport weighty so I'm trying to decide what needles to use because I don't want them to be humongous but it's so pretty and soft and squishy but like rustic -y still like yeah. it's not super it's nice. It's really nice. I'm excited. And I have this in like a little bag I have never even used before. I got it last year at Maryland Shape and Wall. I keep it's Cottontail Farm. It came with like a kit. Like her mom is Gypsy. Gypsy Mountain Farm, I think, is the yarn dyer. It's her mom, and she is the daughter who does bags. And she made bags to go with a yarn kit, which I have the yarn kit. But yeah, I'm like finally using stuff for like Maryland Sheep and Wool that because I'm like, I better use this now. But here's the Butterfly Hill Farm Store. If you're local in Virginia or Maryland or somewhere, it's really cute. It is in Waterford, Virginia, and literally like a half hour from my house. So it was not very far. Yeah. It was super cool. And they were so nice. They were so nice. We got a lot of stuff there too. We got dad some hot pepper jelly. Oh, yeah, we did. Galen got peanut brittle, which was actually delicious. And you couldn't have peanut brittle because she's allergic to tree nuts. But you got a little llama. Or, or alpaca. Little llama. Or an alpaca, yeah. Which one is it? Alpaca. Alpaca, probably. They don't have llamas there. Okay. So future cast ons I have ready to go are those socks, obviously. But also my St. Patrick's Day socks, mm -hmm. which have already passed. But we're on a trend now for doing things late. I'm going to do the lollipop yarn, self-striping. I haven't done self-striping in a little while, so I really want to do that. And here's the mini it comes with. I love that green. It is really pretty. And then, Brooke, do you want to show the card? And then what's the colorway called? Blarney? Blarney. And what's the base? Is it on the quintessential base? I'm not sure. Mm. No, the beefcake base, 80-20. So it's like plush. You want to hold it up? So that white is like a speckly stripe. I've had this in my stash for a while. I really want to knit this one. So yeah. I already have them in bags, like ready to cast on, but I wanted to finish other things. Where did this, come? Oh. this came from here. <laughs> I'll be like, what is this from? So I have two socks ready to go. And I just finished a bunch of socks, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I have the big rib sweater to cast on of yeah. yours, which is coming up. I just gonna, I'm just going to do a little bit more. I'm going to fix Dalen's sweater mm -hmm. and get to where it needs to be and then start the sleeves. But he's going to need to be here, which he actually comes home for Easter break. Yeah, he does. He has a long weekend. That's right. Yeah, and it's it's really cool because it always goes with their spring break. is always Easter weekend or whatever. It's like their last weekend of spring break is Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. And so it happens to be when Dalen comes home, so it's really cool. Yeah. It's like, it's like for a long weekend. And that's it. That's all I have, Brooke. Yeah. How you doing? Anything? Oh, should we talk about why Brooke's so busy all the time? Well, besides, you know, she, junior year, taking a lot of AP classes. Yeah. What else did you do recently? Um, After I, Christmas. I started a club in my school. She started so a brand new club all by herself. So I'm proud. like the president and founder. Of <laughs> I'm, I'm like the president. <laughs> I'm like the I'm president like the and president. founder of this club at my school. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like anything like huge because it's not. It's not. Well, it's not like I'm saying like it's not like there's not a lot of people in it because like it's you not just like, started it. Yeah, so there's like. 10, Tell them what it is. 
so it's future female leaders. It basically just encourages women to get out into the work field. So it's basically stuff like that. So we have guest speakers and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Brooke's doing all yeah. this. So exciting. And then I'm applying for another officer position in another club. And I'm doing like five other clubs on top of that. And okay, so what's the officer <laughs> position? What club are you going to apply for? Uh, officer position? Buddy Club. It is a club where you go and hang out with the special needs kids at our school. And um, that's definitely my favorite club because it's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's nice. So their um, officer, like, applications are coming out soon. So I'm waiting for that to happen. So she's president and founder of one club and then wants to be like, what do you yeah. want to go for? So I definitely don't want to go for president because I'm already president Obviously. of something else and I don't want to do that. So I was thinking either treasury or secretary. Mm. So you one of those two. But I also could be social media coordinator, but like. Yeah, you're pretty good at social media. I am pretty good at social media, but it's just like, I feel like I'm better with money and stuff like that. <laughs> Spending it. I mean, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I'm friends with, like, all the officers. Oh, that's good. So I'm friends with, like, the president and the vice president. And then what did you do as, like, a part of one of your volunteering things for Buddy Club? You did. Oh, it was I so went cute. to a, a special needs prom, and I got... It was put on by a church. It one of our churches around It was put on by a church here. that you're at, yeah. So they do it, like, every year. Mm -hmm. This is our first year getting back at it because of COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had a sweet date. He was so sweet. Um, what was his name? His name was Philip, and <laughs> his mom and his grandma were there. So she had to get, they all got all of the, yeah, what so would they call you guys, buddies? Yeah, we're called buddies. And so you, were like, all had to get dressed up like you were going to prom. Yeah, so I wore, like, one of my old homecoming dresses, and they wanted us to wear that, so they felt like they were actually, like, out with their friends. So then everyone got a buddy. I went with my friend Kelsey. She got a buddy. I got a buddy. And, like, everyone kind of went their separate ways. It wasn't just for just high schoolers. It was mm. from, like, like middle school or high school or all the way to, to, like, adult, to right. a, like, adult. So, like, my friend, she actually had a older man, and he was so sweet. <laughs> His name, I think, was Robert. He, he, like, was like, you look so beautiful. I was like, thank you. Like, he was the <laughs> sweetest thing ever. And he had, like, a roommate with this one guy. And they were, like, roommates together. And they were, oh, they were so cute. So, anyways, this this prom was like it was really nice. It was like, like it was nicer than your prom. Yeah, it was like it <laughs> they had was different so nice. rooms, different floors, yeah. DJs, and it was they like didn't have a DJ. it was like it was, the whole church was, was like this whole, it's a giant church was used. Yeah, and they've already been like they already emailed they already texted like, me like I hope we're gonna make it next year. It's February 9th. <laughs> it's February <laughs> 9th. It's right here. It's because your your buddy had sent you a thank you. He card. did send me a thank you card. So cute. Yeah. His mom was like really appreciative. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. Um, you're so sweet, bro. They're, they're, <laughs> but no, his mom and grandma were there, and I took pictures of them. And then they're, but then the mom was like, no, no, come in the pictures. So I got like a whole bunch of family pictures of them. So <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah, they're yeah. all so sweet. It was really, it was really. You had a lot of fun. I remember. Yeah, but he was also um, nonverbal, mm -hmm. but he was still like living it up. And I was like, yeah. yeah, go off. Like I was like, we're gonna have so much fun here tonight. Like <laughs> I got him to dance. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Awesome. So yeah, so Brooke's been doing a lot daily has been doing a lot. Our my I said our son, not your son. Your <laughs> my, brother, son. my son. <laughs> he got CEA president. So my son has been involved in cadet government since his sophomore year because they're their freshman years, their rat years. He's in a military school. They don't really get to be involved in all that. But he interviewed at the end of his rat year for a sophomore year position. So he wanted to be in cadet government of the CEA, which is Cadet Equity Association. So I think Title IX. Um, and so they basically do investigations. They make sure that everybody's getting treated fairly mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And they do a lot of training of their fellow cadets yeah. of what's appropriate, not appropriate, and what to look out for and that sort of thing. Um, and so he's been in it each year. So that year, they only take three sophomores. He's one of the three, which a ton of people applied yeah. and interviewed, which was shocking. We were so proud of him. And then the next year, they take another three for junior year. He got it this year. So he's one of three this year. And then he applied. He interviewed for, like, president, vice president, like, a whole bunch of things. Yeah. And he got president. I was like, I know. <laughs> it's really, it. it's great. It's and so cool. Of course, cool. like, my mom's like, well, of course he did. I'm like, mom, I know he's a good kid, but, like, <laughs> a ton of people applied and interviewed. No, like, yeah, it's still shocking. Like, because, like, I mean, everyone... Every parent thinks their kids should yeah. get in. But it's, yeah. just, it's still shocking when they do. I mean, when they actually get picked and he's in, like, out of, so it's only seniors can be the president or in vice presidents. 
Um, and so they, they have like a class of like less than 500 and not everybody applied for it, of course, but I mean, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? I was so proud of him. So, so of course he's already like super busy cause he had to be involved in picking like all of the other positions. So he's been yeah. super stressed cause he's got all these meetings and he's got a lot coming up this summer for train for military training. Um, yeah, so it's just, he's going through a lot mm -hmm. too, but he gets to come home this for Easter weekend, yeah, so we're pretty excited about it. Um, and then, oh, Damon and I, my husband and I went to a fancy wedding. <laughs> I went to Philly to see our friends get married, and it was so cool. It was, I've never, it was a formal wedding, so we had to dress formally, which was actually really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, I've never been to a grown-up wedding, because, like, <laughs> I've been involved in, like, young people getting married when we were young, and you don't have as much money, but when grown-ups get married... It's nice. It is, like, all out now. And it, we walk in, I'm like, oh, it's a small wedding. And I'm like, well, that's probably why they can do it so nice. I mean, I say small, but it was still pretty big. But it was so nice. Mm -hmm. So well done. There were shuttles from the hotel. Like, we didn't have to. It was just very well thought out. I, I think they hired, like, a planner to do all that. But it was mm -hmm. like, that's the way to go for your like, I'm getting I'm not a planner. planning. <laughs> I'm getting a planner. <laughs> are, are you? Uh, yeah, dad. Dad's is she, yeah, is she dad's paying for this planner? Yeah. I mean, Damon will definitely heal it. Dad will be, dad will be like, okay, anything you want. Dad will be like, your wedding, your day, got it. He's like, spoiled. No, it's just like, I, I don't know if you've seen Taylor Tomlinson, but there's like this one like part where she was talking about how like nowadays um, parents are like, they treat their kids like equally. She's a stand-up comedian. And she was like, she's like, did you know they get down with them to eye level? I didn't even know the color of my dad's eyes until I was 20-something. And that's because his ID fob his wallet one time. <laughs> and then she's like, she like, she like pretends being one of the parents. She's like, she's like hey, is there anything I can do? Like, did you like your lunch bowl today? Okay, is there any feedback? She's like, let me know. She's like, she's like, this is your child and I'm just lucky to be a part. <laughs> and, then like, and I'm like, that's what dad's going to be like for my wedding. He's going to be like, I'm just happy to be here. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's a still a long ways away. Or at least a little bit ways away. It, or at no, least. No, stop. It's a long way. Long way. Long way. Long, long way. Ways. Long way. That's I'm okay. turning 18 this year. I'm not ready for it. I mean, my son's 20, so I mean. He's fine. Dale's fine. Dale can do whatever he wants. I'm <laughs> waiting. Because I was talking actually with Ms. O'Connor, my AP Lang teacher, um, about like it. So I learned about tattoos. Because <laughs> she actually Don't even tattoos. Her. But, um, I had told, should we explain Oh, oh so I was asking mom, I was like, hey, mom, like, I wanted one actually originally when I turned 16. Because you can get a tattoo when you're 16 in Virginia if you have parents' consent. And mom was like, no, when you're 18, your body do whatever I you want. I let you get your nose pierced. She didn't let me get my nose pierced, and I just like, didn't push it. I'm but just then, thinking tattoos, like, no, it's let's just a say what you, let me thing. just say what you said. When you're 16? No, no, no. no. I mean, oh, oh no, sorry. I mean, when, I, when I asked, I was like, okay, how about 18? And Mom was like, yeah, no, since you're 18, your body your choice, you can do whatever you want. Okay, I brought it up recently because I was like, for my birthday, can you, can you like, help which is pay? her senior year in October? And then Mom didn't realize because that I was I'm actually gonna be 18 like in the beginning of my like I turned 18 like while, she's in high while I'm in high school like in the middle because I'm an early I'm an early bloomer. No, well that's not the word. Because like. Dayla and I turned Yeah, they're, they're before, summer right? birthdays. Like, we have summer birthdays right before college. So. I'm a fall birthday. So. Dayla actually went to college at 17, so. Yeah. And I just didn't think, I'm like, yeah, 18, cool, without thinking that she was still in high school. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just that she, it just seems like, when they're still in high school, they're still a kid. They seem like, yeah, I get that. So I'm no. like, when but I had mine, <laughs> I was 19, but I already been like two years of college, like, so I was like, yeah, 18 is fine. I didn't think about the fact that. And she can't take it back now, And I was so. like, what? And you were like, you said, I was like. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> As a parent, you're like, oh, can't take this through. I know. No. But like, mom's really good at like not going back on her word, right, mom? <laughs> no, that's all I'm asking for for my 18th birthday. Yeah. It's a tattoo. And it's a, okay, well, it's a sentimental I mean, tattoo. By expensive. the way, it's a sentimental tattoo. I want line work. <laughs> I want line work. <laughs> four butterflies, right? Four butterflies, right here, right here, right there, right here. Oh, I'm not a problem. And then, why? Why right? You want that showing in your wedding dress? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's four butterflies that had Grammy Newman's initials, Grammy's initials, your initials, and then my initials. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want Papa and Grammy Newman's birthday on my wrist. Okay, you're only getting one tattoo. Though. Well, no, I know. This is for future. And then I want and then I want something for my cats right here. And then I want something like right here. And then I want... <laughs> I was talking to my friend about this and AP Lang, so... I mean, Dylan got a tattoo last summer when we got our nose pierced. Mm -hmm. My son got his tattoo, but he was also like 19, almost 20. Yeah, well, you know. That's why. Actually, no, he was turning 19. He turned 20. He's 20 right now. But did he he, oh, no, he got, he got a tattoo before he'll we left be, for our trip. He'll be right. 21 this year. Yeah, well, you he'll know. Be drinking age. Uh, 
And then I told Damon, I was like, you do realize that when Brooke turns 18 this year, we have two adults fully adult children and he was like mm -mm, nope <laughs> i was like yeah i was not yeah, i was not you know consulted on this at all consulted <laughs> i feel like no one warned me they like sit you down and be like look it's that time it's, it's the time <laughs> it is happening soon oh my gosh okay so we have our giveaway winners all right so i haven't actually done it yet so i'm gonna show it here okay so i'm redrawing this first one is the redraw for the two-year anniversary which is the amplifier um, bulky yarn and also the calendar is like almost April. You guys don't have the calendar yet. So the winner, I am sorry, here it's coming. I'm redrawing it here and congratulations. Here is the winner. <laughs> Yay. You're getting it. Uh, DM me on Instagram or email me at the email address down in our show notes. Everything also is down in show notes. Um, and email me your address saying, Hey, I'm the winner. Yay. And then I will send it to you. You have to say that. Hey, I'm the winner. Yay. If you don't yeah. say that, we will literally disqualify <laughs> you. <I'm kidding>. Not <laughs> true. Um, so I want this out. I want someone to enjoy it also. Okay. And the next winner is from the last podcast, um, for the Hey Country Creations. Go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and tell her who the winner is. And then you guys, and then go ahead and contact me. Let me know your contact information. And I will get you guys in touch mm -hmm. with the girl from. We're going to do the thing again. Let's yeah. The so here's the winner. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> so you get to pick out a St. Patrick's Day stitch marker, which I still need to order. And I, she still has them in the shop. I really want the four leaf clover one. She also has a rainbow one and a leprechaun one and she got a bunch of different ones. But I, I need to order from her. So here I will. So here's the winner. Contact me and we'll get you guys all moving because she's you're going to tell her what you want and she's going to mail it to you. So I don't do anything like that. But yeah, so it's two people. Go ahead and give me a message. I There's other podcasts are having issues with like spam bots or whatever, mm -hmm. like commenting on your, saying you're the winner. I I don't have that problem. I'm not a big podcast. I don't think they don't, they don't have that problem. But it, if this leads to that, I will never message you on a comment. Like you'll hear it in a mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. That's why this one's so late. <laughs> you'll hear it in a podcast and then you're supposed to message me your information. Smart, smart. So that chill. way, yeah, don't, don't pro be weirded out by pro podcast by <laughs> robots. But yeah, that's it, I think. So I think we're yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, until next time, although Brooke probably won't be here, but <laughs> yay, Brooke was here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next time. All right, bye. bye. Ooh. Big. Big.